Today we're going to do a test of the windshield repair curing lights. The windshield repair curing lights are at the uh, 365 nanometer. I recommend that if you are repairing windshield that you buy one of these uh, UV light meters. You can see this is a UVA 365 nanometer light meter. And this way you can tell whether you are getting uniform UV energy from your light source. Uh, I can tell you from years of experience that if you're outside you can use this meter to see how the sun is and the sun is always going to give uniform uh, UV energy uh, more so than uh, any other light. Uh, the closest thing to the sun is a fluorescent bulb and the way these works is we're going to put the light source on top of the uh, of the reader and you're going to see this number move and what you want uh, when curing a uh, liquid to a solid is you want it to cure at a uniform rate. If it doesn't cure at a uniform rate you're going to have tension within your cured structure or we call it a weak spot. Uh, the classic example of this is float glass which is what windshield glass is made out of. Float glass is on a, on a bed of tin and when the glass cools, the surfaces cool first and close up and pulls on the center. So the center of the windshield glass, any float glass, is in tension. The outer surfaces is called compression. And that is the strength of the glass is the depth of the compression, uh, the surface compression strength, which in float glass or windshield glass is 21% deep the center is tension and that's 58 percent of the middle thickness of the glass and glass will break when a fracture penetrates the surface compression strength and gets into the tension zone and once it hits the tension zone it breaks uh, when you see a stone break in a windshield it's because that chip and that fracture penetrated 21 percent deep if that chip did not hit the 21% or did not uh, penetrate 21%, you have a little surface pit. Now, the edge of the glass, uh, when it goes into the mold of whatever vehicle it's going in, it goes on to a metal frame of that particular model windshield, and it get go, it's heated to 1,000 degrees, and then when it comes out of the oven, after it has sagged into the mold, it starts to cool off. And here again, remember, when the last part of a liquid turning into a solid will go into tension when it cools, specifically glass. So when it comes out of the oven, the frame of the, the metal frame is still hot at the edge. So the edge cools last and has multiple temperature variances happening at the edge. And that area cools last and puts the uh, tension zone at or near the surface. So the edge of the windshield, uh, the first two inches, has the tension zone uh, at or near the surface, which is why when a rock hits within two inches of the edge, you get an edge crack immediately or almost immediately, because that's the tension zone. In the middle, uh, you're going to get a stone break, but it has 21% surface strength in the middle. So uh, your resin is a liquid and you're going to turn it into a solid by using uh, UV rays at 365 nanometers. So you want those UV rays to be as even as possible so you don't create a tension zone in your structure or a weak spot. So uh, uh, I'm, the, I'm with Ultrabond and I don't sell LED lights for curing and there's a reason for that. I sell I recommend sunlight if it's available and I sell fluorescent lights and here I'm going to show you why. This light, this is a cheap light. This is a cheap light but it gives off uniform UV energy and the intensity is perfect. Uh, this light has produced chip repairs at consistently at over a hundred percent new glass strength. And, yep, you can say this is an inexpensive cheap light. You can get these anywhere from $10 to $30. But they do the best job on a chip. 
far better than anything else you're going to see here for a chip uh, as far as the LEDs work. So here I'm going to put this, here it has a plastic cover on there, and when I put that on the meter you'll see your reading at, at 2. And you see it stays at 2. So whatever surface you put this on, it's going to be uniform. When you take the cover off, you're going to double the intensity. And it will cure faster. This cheap light will cure in one minute when you take the uh, plastic off. Two minutes with the plastic. Now it's, it's worth an extra you know, minute or two to restore your customer's safety device back to 100%. And again, that's why we sell this cheap light. Now here's another light. Again, uh, any fluorescent light you can find at 365 nanometers will work. And here again, you'll see it a little bit more powerful, but it stays right around the one. This is not going to create any weak spots or tensions on in your cured resin. And again, this will cure uh, one to two minutes. Now, let's, let me show you the opposite of uh, curing at a uniform energy. LEDs do not contain a filament and instead illuminate using a semiconductor. So instead of just instantly burning out like fluorescent bulbs, LED lights age over time and progressively get dimmer until they stop working altogether. This is what is called lumen degradation or LED degradation. LED is becoming increasingly popular, but there's a misconception surrounding LED lighting. Many believe that LED lights work the same up until the lights go out, but in reality, LED lighting slowly loses its brightness. Unlike fluorescent lamps that will completely fail, which makes it easy to tell when a light needs to be replaced, LEDs don't go out completely, so you're left to people's perceptions. So this light was sent to me by, uh, was sent to me and most of the uh, other windshield manufacturers in the United States about 10 years ago. Uh, when I was called, I said, sure, send it to me and I'll give it a test. Now, whenever uh, you test a UV light, the first thing you do is you, you test it to a UV meter. So anybody who's selling UV lights should have a UV meter. These things only cost $150. And quite frankly, I don't know how somebody who has a UV light meter could sell this light. Because watch how this light jumps all over the place. Let's see here we are starting at 17, 20, 14, 13. So you're going to have... From 20 down to 12, you're going to have tension in between these bulbs. That's too much variation throughout the area you're trying to cure. Area it down to 11. That's in between the bulbs. And each bulb is giving off a different amount of energy. So it is up to 20, 18, 13. You are destroying the resin if you're using this light. You have all lots of tension and weak spots in it. So I do not recommend ever putting this on a crack. Okay, and then, now you take a look at the bulbs. You can see here that the bulbs are three quarters of an inch apart. 
and right there it's going to tell you that you're going to have a hot spot where it's going to zap real quickly at the bulb in between the bulbs and this is going to pull in, in on the center in between the bulbs which that's exactly how you get tension in glass well this is going to put tension in between the bulbs and the other thing is each bulb is going to give off a different amount of energy this one is given off 19 this one is given off 18 this one is given off 18 this one is at 11 so that's why Ultrabond does not sell LED lights for curing now when it comes to a crack we use these lights and here again let's see how it if it jumps see how even and consistent it is throughout the curing area so this is not going to create any tension in your cured resin and it's going to maximize the strength that that resin can give you that's why ultrabond crack repairs have been since day one stronger than new glass This is for a longer crack. See, being, being uniform is more important than intensity. Because again, you're fixing, you want to restore the strength to a critical safety device. And uh, hurrying up and curing it to save yourself 90 seconds uh, to compromise a safety device is not not good business practices so how, see how consistent this is just like the Sun this is the same type of energy you're going to get off of sunlight okay and now for one of the worst lights we've ever tested let me plug it in Now we uh, we have our own lab, so we can do lots of testing. Uh, this particular light, uh, called the Procure, it, on our first uh, uh, lab test we were doing for mechanical strength, it all three samples cracked out when it went into thermal cycling. Thermal cycling uh, will expose the DNA of a repair, and what thermal cycling is 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 you uh, you do the repair for the uh, manufacturer's instructions and then it goes into a freezer now, I set the freezer at minus 10 which will get the glass to about zero and uh, I leave it in there eight hours to simulate a, a, a vehicle in a four season climate uh, that's not garaged and then it comes out of the freezer and then goes to an oven uh, you put it in the oven and then I set the oven at 170 and it'll take about five minutes from the glass to go from zero uh, up up to uh, 170 and then I leave it in there for a couple hours and then you take it out and let it cool down to about to less than 100 degrees and then back into the freezer it's called thermal cycling and we do three rounds of that uh, so when the first time this cracked out uh, we were using a gray resin gray tinted resin all three of them cracked out so we switched to one of our, an ultrabond resin which had a score of 92 or 45 resin had a score of 92 percent uh, glass strength and two out of the three samples cracked out so we had to do a process of elimination and we discovered that the, one of the biggest problems was this cure light this cure light cost four hundred dollars ten bucks ten twenty thirty dollars you can get these for let's see what the UV energy is on here first off there's the bulbs and look at the distance between here here and here so let's put that in here and we'll go around in a circle 
you see this is jumping a lot more than we are down to zero 1.0 9.9 you can see it's all over the place here it is at zero okay so you're preparing a star break with this you're again going put uh, weak spots and tension in your in your stone break repair there it is at one so for this to be doing a good uh, proper cure that energy should be as close as possible throughout that circle so what you have here is you have different uh, intensities of UV hitting all around that whole circle. And that's why this one cracked out. Out of hundreds of, uh, of chip repair tests we did uh, with the Rolex standard, uh, including all the do-it-yourself kits, who also say, who say sunlight, this one was the only one that cracked out multiple times with uh, multiple resins. So again, uh, our recommendation is uh, if you're fixing windshields, get yourself a UV light meter. Um, don't fast cure either. Fast curing is also going to create tension in your, in your uh, cured resin. And you're only going to save yourself maybe 90 seconds by doing a fast cure. And again, this is, this is a structural repair you're doing. And to maximize the, uh, the resin's ability to bond and hold that glass at 100% of new glass strength, it's not worth the 90 seconds uh, to compromise a customer's safety device. Uh, thanks again, and this is our, uh, our video on UV curing lights, and uh, buy yourself a UV light meter.